Welcome back to our next installment of working with Altium Designer. So today we're going to be looking at some of the features in Altium for managing library files, changing footprints, and taking care of some of these project notes that have been created previously. So let's take a look at what some of these comments are. So again, if you don't already have the comments and task pane open, you can open it by going up to the view tab, coming down to panels and clicking on comments and tasks. There's some other useful features in here that I suggest you explore as well. So let's take a look at a few of these uh, comments that we have here. Uh, all resistors need proper footprints and part numbers assigned. Uh, assign appropriate footprints and find part number. So that's comment number five. Uh, comment number three, assign appropriate footprint and find part number. Source proper part. So we can see if I click on these here, that it's related to individual comments on the page. And we can see where the where the comments are, are uh, numbered. So here you can see this highlighting here for comment number three. And then this comment here is related to um, this capacitors. So if we look to the printed circuit board design that's already been completed, we can already see here we have a capa we have the connector here, we have a couple capacitors laid out. So let's see if we can't um, find some of these footprints and then go through the process of updating libraries and updating um, the actual print circuit board design. So first things first, if we look on the left hand corner here, the two libraries that are currently being used are links to uh, other libraries. So these libraries aren't directly in my project. I can tell that because of this little white arrow symbol here. Basically, it's letting you know that these uh, libraries are being sourced outside of your project folder directory. So one of the first things, uh, if you're going to start making your own footprints and your own uh, library schematics, you should uh, go up to the design uh, tab here at the top and go make schematic library. So what that's going to do is it's going to generate uh, schematic footprints for parts in your um, design. And you can check here what parameters you want in your actual uh, library that it's going to generate. So I'm going to have it add all of them. And there we go. So now I have a new tab down here on my on the left hand pane here. So I have this schematic library tab and you can see here now all these parts that have been pulled from the other library I was using before. And if we go back to the project view, you can see here now I have an actual library file that's actually part of my uh, design, but that's only for the schematics. But now I have these individual resistors and capacitor uh, schematic views that we can use to start customizing. So now I can specify specific part numbers for each one of these, as well as I can change footprints. So you can see with each one of these that there's an associated footprint. So we can go through now and have a little bit more customization as to what uh, footprints are being related to each one of these parts. So. One of the first comments um, that we looked at was that this connector and this capacitor need to be properly sourced. So let's go to our old buddy DigiKey because it's the best place I know of to find proper parts. So why don't we start with the, the connector and then we'll do the capacitor first. So we'll pull up DigiKey here and now I want to find a connector. So again, DigiKey and these websites do not work like uh, Google does for searching. They're parametric, which means um, unless you the exact thing you type in here matches how they entered a parameter, it will not find it. So that being said, my best suggestion to you is to manually click through the individual menus to find the exact um, part that you're looking for. So the question is, what kind of connector do we want? for the edge of our uh, logic probe that we're designing here. And well, we're not really sure how it's going to be mounted right now. So why don't we look at something like, ooh, I don't know, why don't we go with a terminal block? And it's going to be um, either headers, plugs and sockets, or it's going to be wire to board. Well, why don't we just say right now we're unsure, so we're gonna go wire to board. And now we're gonna to need to specify some things like the, um, the number of levels, well, there's only going to be one level and then the positions per level. Well, we actually only need three for our design. So let's take a look. And I only want, again, parts that are in stock and normally stocking basically means they're on hand. 
And I'm also going to want things that are either bag, bulk, cut tape, uh, tray, or tube. All right, let's take a look at what we have. The next thing you're probably going to want to do is look at uh, the size of wire it accepts. So in this case here, this is a fairly low power product. So do I want it to be a screwless clamping device or do I want to have screw um, with a rising cage? Basically, is there a little cage here that screws down and, and crushes the wire? I like that a little bit more. It's a little bit more of a positive feel and there's not a big difference in price. Well, why don't we see here if this actual part number I can find in our friend Altium. So I'm going to go to Altium. Why don't we go back to our, sorry, I'm going to need to add the view again. So under toolbars, under panels, I'm going to add the manufacturing parts search. And then why don't we try typing this in? Oh, look, T connectivity. And there's the part right there. No model though. So do any of these have a model? I don't know. Let's do a quick filter. So I can come down here and I can filter through this and it has a model. Nope, none of them have a model. So I can't place any of these directly in the diagram. Okay, but what I can do is I can um, save the part to my workspace. I can add the supplier link to part, add supplier link and parameters to part. So let's do that. So I'm going to add it to this part. So I now have all the parameters of that part added to this but it does not match it for the schematic representation or the symbol. So let's do a little modification. I'm going to go into my ESET 293 schematic library here. I'm going to come down to my header and why don't we just, um, we're going to modify this design. So in my design, pin four is not being used, right? If I look at this here, pin four is not being used. So why don't we just delete pin four from this design? make this a little bit smaller and let's save that and now it's going to prompt me where I want to save it yeah this is where I'm saving it inside my demo folder and I also want to save this but now I can update this part one of two ways so under part actions here I can update selected part from the libraries so it's going to ask me yeah this is the sheet I want to update I want to fully replace uh, the thing is on the sheet and it says there's no changes made. It's pulling this part instead of from um, the library I just made from the original library. So let's see if we can push it the other way. So let's go into here. So this has been saved. It's updated. Let's see if I can update schematic sheets from it. And there we go. Pushing that uh, updated. Now, however, the associated footprint here is still incorrect. So I need to now also make uh, a PCB library for my design. So I'm going to go over here to the PCB document. Again, I'm going to save this because there's a little asterisk there. So it's been modified. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up to design. I'm going to go up to tools. Sorry, I was correct. Design, make PCB library. And here's my PCB library here. Again, first thing I'm going to want to do with the PCB library is I'm going to want to save it. So I'm going to take this library. We're going to click save. It's going to prompt me. Well, it should have prompted me where I wanted it. Sorry, I lost my toolbar window here at the bottom for some reason. That's odd. There we go, and now it's back. So there should also be a window down here to my left. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. So let's just go under view, panels, uh, PCB lib list. And 
And we're also going to add to that a couple other panels, PCB library. So this is the original menu that I was looking for. I don't know why it didn't show up originally. So what we need to do now is we need to find um, a footprint that's going to replace this one. So how are we going to do that? Well, for that part we selected, right? So this one here that I want with the screw terminals, we're going to have to take a look at the data sheet. So there is an IGS model here. So this is basically the 3D model that we could add the step file or the IGS file, uh, file that we can add. So we'll look at doing that as well. And then we also have um, a 3D PDF. So we need something to actually look at um, physically how this is laid out. So we're going to have to check a couple of these files because the actual PDF here doesn't show us the physical dimensions of the footprint. So we're going to have to do a little bit of investigation here and let's see what we get. So that's just the 3D view. That's not helpful. There we go. There's a nice data sheet that describes the pin spacing. So this now tells me the size of the pins and the spacing between them, right? So this is the recommended PCB board layout. So uh, we need to know what these dimensions are. So typically on these drawings, all the dimensions will be mentioned either on the top left or that we mentioned on the bottom right here. So all these dimensions I'm going to assume are in millimeters because that's what's specified here on the right hand side. Generally on these diagrams, they will say uh, the dimensions. Yeah, dimensions in millimeters. Sorry, I missed that here as well, dimensions in millimeters. So this is the recommended PCB layout. So the spacing between the pins is 5.08 millimeters, and then the whole size is 1.1 millimeters for the diameter, plus or minus 0.1. So let's take a look at that in Altium. So I'm just going to move this window off to the side so that I can look at the diagram while routing it. So rather than reinventing the wheel here, why don't we just change this part? So what am I going to do? Well, I can actually um, copy this part and paste it. And then why don't we just rename this? Uh, we're going to rename this our name from so this is a terminal block. And then we can even grab the description from DigiKey. And then we can also specify the height here. So again, this is in mil. So if I click off this and press Q, it'll toggle this to millimeters. So from our data sheet, I can now look at this and say, oh, how tall is the device all, all over? Well, it's about 10 millimeters. And I could also add in parameters here if I wanted to add additional ones. So let's look at modifying this. Well, we know our design only has um, three mounting holes. So this is my origin mount here, one. So I'm going to get, get, get rid of this row plus one extra. And now these three here, I can look at modifying. Essentially, what do I want to do? Well, the whole size, I need to change to 1.1. 1 .1, and there's a tolerance here I can add as well. So from our data sheet, the tolerance is plus 0 0.1 and there is no minus. I can also type the overall length. So from the data sheet as well, I can look at the overall length of the pins.
So from the data sheet, the overall length is 1.5. So I now need to check to make sure that these are spaced correctly. So if I use control M, that gives me the measurement tool. So here I have a distance of 2.54 millimeters. So I'm going to need to modify this. So the pin to pin spacing on the on the board recommended is 5.08. So I essentially need double that. So since this is set at uh, 0 0.0, essentially it's the origin, I can change the location of this pad. So I have an XY measurement here. So if this is X and this is Y, I can essentially just set this one to 5.08. Oops, sorry, that's the, that was the shape of it, not the position. Uh, whole size. I believe this is the position, 5.08. Yeah. So now I'm still selecting the same designator, so why don't I move this third one first? So here, if this one is 5.08, I need to have another 5.08 for my origin. So that'd be 10.16, 10.16, and this is 5.08. So there's the, pit, the spacing for my new device. And these yellow lines here are just showing the outline of it. So again, I can just delete these and redraw them. I can modify and move them, whatever I think is easier for me because it's just providing the outline for the part. So you might want to physically look at the drawing and set these accurately based on the actual part you're using. So, and let's just double check this measurement. So if I do the control M feature again, I can measure from here to here. And now we can see we have 5.08. So one other thing I can now do is I can actually add a 3D model to this. So in the design process, when you're going through this, you can come up here and go place 3D body. So you can actually load a file in. So here, let's go back to the website we're looking at, right? So if I go to the product page here, I have drawings for both an IGS and for a 3D step. And then all of these are the same model number here. So they should all be the same type. All it's changing is um, the specific model properties. So you're going to want to go through, make sure that you're getting the exact model that you're looking to purchase. So why don't we grab this one here for this uh, step file. So this is going to prompt me to download it. Again, I'm going to need to um, open the zip file. And now if we come back here, I've unzipped the file. And if I go back up to place, I go up to 3D bodies. I can go to where the file is located, which is under my downloads. So this is the file I just downloaded and extracted. And then there's the 3D body. And now here I'm looking to place it. So I'm not really sure what this looks like. So why don't we just place it centered on it for now? And we can go to the 3D view. I can go to the 3D view by pressing um, three. So as we can see here, the part is not lined up properly. So if I take this 3D body now, so if I go back to the 2D view, I can take this and I can now rotate it. So why don't we try rotating it in Y by 90 degrees and see what that looks like. Oh, rotated it the wrong way. So let's set it back. And why don't we try rotating it in Y now? Or sorry, in Z. Nope, still the wrong direction. 
because we don't know how they created this part. Ah, that looks more correct now. But it doesn't look like the standoff height is set properly. So then let's look at the changing the standoff height here. We'll try going up. Ah, there we go. So it looks like it's a three millimeter standoff height. And it looks like it needs to be translated slightly over. So again, I can look at uh, moving this physically. So I can physically move these devices or I can also grab the device and try to slide it into place. Now again, this is only a 3D body representation, but we can also see now that the outline that I originally had for the part probably isn't correct. So I'm probably going to want to modify um, this layer, but notice how I'm having a hard time clicking on it. So I can change the mechanical, I can change the layer that I'm on in the design here. So let's take a look at what other options are available. Uh, top overlay, that's the layer I want to modify. Top overlay is basically the layer that is going to be printed onto the board in ink. And why don't we just make this one connected line rather than having multiples that want to bend. So I drag that across and there we go. I now have my part outline and this is the 3D model representing it. Okay, let's save this. And if I go back to my schematic now, I can save this and I can select this part and I can actually look at the properties for it. So that's the window on the side here. And I can see this footprint model. So I can actually add a footprint to this. And let's go in. So again, we always want to specify the library path name. We're going to go in here and browse. What project am I going to use? Well, I actually want to use the new library I made. So I'm going to use this library. And I'm going to want to use the terminal block. And there we go. There's the model that we just created. I'm going to click OK. And now I have my terminal block uh, footprint here. I'm going to save this. And now I want to update my schematic, right? So update printed circuit board document. And this is going to tell me the changes, right? I'm adding this component library and I'm modifying that, ter that footprint to this new terminal block one that I made. So let's validate the changes and execute. And there we go. Here's my new footprint here that we just created. So now I'm going to need to regenerate my polygon pour because it does not match anymore. And if we check in the 3D model view, ah, see, my model relative to my pin one is actually backwards. So I might actually want to go in to my PCB library here and I might actually want to rotate this by 180 degrees. How do I know if I do it correctly? Well, we can see relative to this how we do the rotation. So let's click on the part. Uh, so I'm, I'm not gonna need to rotate an X. It's probably gonna be in Z. So why don't we try 180 degrees? Ah, and that looks like it rotated properly. Now, Are my pins still lined up? Ah, they are not still lined up. So I need to grab the part and I need to align it again. And there we go. Now my part's properly aligned. Let's save this. Go back to the PCB. Let's look at this part. Um, update selected component from PCB library. I saved my library already, so it should update it.
And there we go. My part is now facing the correct way so that the wires come into the open terminals. And I'm now one step closer to finalizing my design. Now let's go back to the schematic sheet here. So I can now take a look at this comment and I can click resolve. So that comment has now been solved and this chip has properly been routed or selected. So as a recap, when we're creating uh, schematic library symbols, the only thing that Altium recognizes as important is these pin numbers. So it has nothing to do with this yellow box or any of the other designators on here. So instance, let's take a look at a few of these parts. So in general, when we have parts, like this regulator, for instance, here, I have these numbers one, two, three. So these are the important things for Altium because the number, the pin numbers are what it uses to actually define the connections. So for instance, here, the designator is important. The name is what we use as um, a descriptor to help us in the layout. Like, so this name that appears inside the box here is what gives us uh, information to help with routing, but the numbers is what Altium uses, right? For instance, one, two, and three in the schematic must match one, two, and three on the footprint here. So let's take a look at our footprint for this. So it's fair TO220. So if I take a look at that and I go here to fair TO220, I have pins one, two, and three. And now the order that these come in must match the data sheet. So that from my schematic uh, representation here of pins one, two, and three, these have to physically align with how the manufacturer specifies the actual physical layout here on the chip. But again, we can also just copy and paste these and modify these based on parameters in the data sheet. We don't have to make them from primitives. We don't exactly have to make them from exact parts. We can find another similar part and modify it to suit. We also have the options up here in the menu to use the IPC compliant footprint wizard. So I'm going to use a footprint wizard. I quite often have to go through this menu here and find something that is similar to what I want to use. So there's a little image here that shows you on the right hand side of approximately what it is that you're building. So based on the type of component you're purchasing, try to find from both the written description here as well as what's in the data sheet as to specifically what type of chip or device you're trying to create a model of physically, right? These are physical representations. Quite often the name here on the left hand side does not match exactly what's being described in the data sheet. For instance, you might be designing an SYC part, but in the data sheet they might just call it an SMD device, SMD standing for surface mount device, and the actual package for it might be a small outline integrated package. So generally things like looking at the pitch width of the pins or looking at how the, the image of the pins looks in the description here might help you figure out what type of package you're looking at or what type of package you should start your design with. And again, you can create multiple footprints and have multiple footprints assigned to a single part. So I hope that was informative and good luck on your PCB design journey.